the guns, you know, irresponsible politicians, the NRA, they're to blame for this tragedy when we know that it's mental illness and bad parents and bad police work that is to blame, not to mention the evil Elliot Roger. Go ahead. Well, number one, I think that there's a combination of a lot of factors, and I will stand by the fact that if you remove the guns from the equation, you'll have far less death and destruction from these psychopaths. Secondly, I would much rather have that guy who sounds courageous and heroic standing up and saying what he's saying than that idiot Joe the Plumber who's getting more press now because he makes a statement that he would he would rather see dead kids than have guns taken out of his hand. I mean, that is the most offensive, disgusting remark, and that's the problem here is that that's the truth. People like him and super conservatives who were so hell-bent on the Second Amendment would rather see kids die than have guns taken out of their hands. How messy... No, Justin, this is the, the issue. Once again, you're trying to turn this into an emotional argument, which is what liberals always have to do, as opposed to keeping it on an intellectual plane. You have to turn it into an emotional response. So I'm not going to allow you to do that in this program. But what I will say is there's a confounding variable with the Second Amendment is that you don't see the byproduct of why it works. Is that how many lives are saved by the fact that people can defend themselves in America with weapons, not only from other perpetrators and psychopaths, but also from the government, which can come in and take away your property or your rights unless you have the right to self-protection, which the Second Amendment provides. Oh, I know. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a brilliant argument, because the last time that I saw a person take a gun and shoot a federal agent to protect themselves from the government... They no, were... You're missing the point, Justin. I can walk you through history. 1927 Soviet Union, 1936 Germany, 1964 Uganda, 1970s Guatemala where the government bans weapons amongst the citizenry, and then the government goes in and starts executing half of the population. So it's not like we're beyond history. We're a part of history, and that has happened before. So don't make me out to be a lunatic when people are trying to protect themselves from an overarching and overbearing government. Are you going to release the microphone now for a moment to your guests, or are you just going to talk and talk? And you know what? I'm throwing something at your... We have, once again, a Justin Leto, like model here in the... Uh, some sort of um, blow-up doll. I just threw something at you. Go ahead. Oh, good. It hurts. It was like, uh, you know, what it's are those? like a voodoo doll. I'm throwing a pen at you now. Go ahead. Yeah, that was nice. I'd like to revisit your comment about how the right to bear arms is to protect us from the federal government taking our property. I would, again, I would invite you to shoot your federal agent next time they try to come and take your property, you moron. That's the stupidest comment you've ever made. Secondly, the idea that we need guns to protect ourselves from other people who have guns, that's the problem, is that everybody in this country has this right to carry a gun wherever they want. And people like Elliot Lodger, who are obviously mentally ill, can go and just buy a gun without any problem whatsoever and shoot up lots of people on a college campus. And you don't see the problem with that. I do. I already said I saw the problem with mentally ill people buying weapons. And, and look, if the therapist puts you on a do not buy list and it's confirmed by another therapist, I think that's a wonderful step in the right direction. I think that there are a lot of things that can be done with mental illness in this country that aren't being done. But remember, the signals were here and the parents and the police did nothing.